Hey there everybody, Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today we're going to look at uh, the very short discography, the very short career of a pretty cool band from the Boston area here in the United States, a band called New England. Obviously, you would hope they're from the Boston area with a name like New England, right? Kind of all matches there. For those of you who are not from the States, the New England area includes, you know, Massachusetts and a lot of those states kind of up Northeast there, just above New York, right? New England is kind of what uh, is nicknamed that whole area. So uh, pretty cool band, though. So they formed in 1978. Uh, their recorded career really only lasted a couple of years. Three albums, uh, you know, by like 82, they were pretty much done. Uh, they've reunited a couple times here and there. Uh, didn't think they recorded a couple of singles and things and played some live dates here and there over the years. But for the most part, as a regular active band, that pretty much ended in 1982. So some of uh, the guys in the band, you got John Fannin on guitars and vocals. You got Jimmy Waldo and Gary Shea on keyboards and bass, who later went on to Alcatraz, joined Graham Bond and Ingvay Malmsteen in Alcatraz uh, shortly after this band broke up. And then you got uh, Hirsch Gardner. Okay, on drums. So, pretty cool band, but uh, kind of hard to categorize because they had, they were really good at writing pop songs, but they were also into progressive rock and, and classic hard rock. So, you could always hear you could feel Mellotron and Hammond Organ and Moog and, you know, big keyboards. Okay. But they also loved, uh, they had a, a, you could hear, the vocal harmonies is what is probably one of the best things about this band. I mean, you listen to New England for the the melodies and the vocals. I mean, it's just big backing vocals and just uh, you know images of Queen and the Beatles and certainly like ELO and 10CC all over the place on these three albums. Okay, music at times kind of rocking, at times kind of lush and poppy, at times very progressive. So you got three pretty good albums. You know, I'd say two of them pretty spectacular. Uh, the other one is is solid. But uh, so let's get to the ranking, right? So we're talking about three albums here. All right, 1979, 80, and 81. That's when they were all released. So I'm going to go, uh, and, and a little bit of history here. So the band was actually discovered by uh, Bill Aukoyne, who is the manager of KISS. So actually discovered the band, managed the band. In fact, their first album was uh, produced by Paul Stanley. Okay, and uh, so it's kind of a little kiss connection here, right? Uh, surprisingly enough, uh, not signed to Casablanca Records, however. So uh, they were on Electra, I believe it was. Yeah, Electra Records. So so let's uh, let's go through my ranking. I actually, my number three was actually pretty set in stone. Uh, it's the top two that kind of kept flip-flopping, flip-flopping, flip-flopping. Even right now, I'm kind of like, hmm. But I'm going to go with uh, last night at the uh, the 11th hour. It was like 11 o'clock last night. I'm just putting the finishing touches on this. I'm like, you know what? This is how I'm going to leave it. So number three, we're going to go with uh, their third and final release from 1981 called Walking Wild. Not a bad album, but I think, uh, you know, it is 1981. Uh, probably the record label is, you know, asking them for hits uh, you got new wave and pop, really, really popular. The big, you know, metal craze is probably a couple of years, you know, two, three years away. So here you got like New England, a kind of band, like a little bit of transition. You know, their first two albums, you know, did okay business. First album did did the best. They had a, a minor hit single on there, but you know, they're really looking for some, you know, something big to happen. And unfortunately, this album is not was not it. Uh, you know, title track "Walking Wild." Good up-tempo rocker, nice keyboards, nice uh, vocals on there. Holding out to me, also up-tempo, pretty good rocker. The problem with this album is you, there's a lot of ballads and really kind of very, very poppy stuff on here. You know, Don't Ever Let Me Go, Love's Up in the Air, DDT. Okay songs, right? Nothing spectacular. Get It Up is decent. Uh, L5 is a pretty good rocker. Uh, She's Gonna Tear You Apart. I actually like one of my favorite tracks on the album. Elevator, kind of quirky. You're There, kind of mellow. I don't know. I, you can hear some of the elements of what's going on in popular music at the time. So a lot of the, you know, there's new wave bands and that the post-punk stuff everywhere. So, you know, the, the Cars and, and all sorts of other bands like that, you know, Blondie and all that. So you can kind of hear some elements from that style of music uh, infiltrating this album. But a fun album, a decent album. It's a good listen. It doesn't quite match up to the other two in the catalog, though. So I'm going to go with my number two, and I changed this around last night. Uh, 
and it's probably going to go against the grain of a lot of people, and that's okay. I'm going to go with number two, their uh, self-titled debut from 1979. You can't go wrong with the first two albums. And to me, they're just so equally good. Uh, I, like I said, I had a hard time just choosing which would go where. But in the end, I think I like the second album a little bit more top to bottom. But there's some great stuff on here. You know, you got Hello, Hello, Hello. Great, quirky, all vocal, kind of reminds me of 10cc. Uh, then you got their hit Don't Ever Want to Lose You. A great song. A great, great song. Again, another one of those kind of like late 70s underrated pop classics from the era. Uh, it's got the, the Mellotron and the synths, right? It's got the soaring vocal harmonies. Kind of rocks too in spots. Really good song. Uh, then you got Punk, which is puny uh, under Nourish Kid. Not a huge fan of that song. It's okay. It kind of doesn't fit on this album, but I get that they wanted to kind of throw something in there because I know the guys in the band were kind of into uh, some of the punk movement, so decent shall i run away alone tonight alone tonight also should have been a huge hit for this band really really memorable chorus uh, it's just a lovely song it's a great great pop song uh, then you got nothing to fear which is good heavy rocker some of the more rocking songs on this album have that kind of deep purple uriah heat feel you know with the hammond organ the crunchy guitar riffing okay shoot is another good one turn out the light the last show and encore encore is another good heavy rocker with great keyboards Really strong album. Great debut. There's the guys in the band up on top. Okay. And then coming in for me at number one, I'm going to go with Explorer Suite from 1980. Uh, this, to me, is a little bit more consistent start to finish than the debut, in my opinion. You know, you might have a couple songs from that debut that might be, like, the best things they ever did, but I think there's just... This album is so strong, top to bottom. Uh, you've got uh, Honey Money, killer opening track. Uh, Living in the 80s, another really catchy, kind of up-tempo, kind of proggy uh, hard rock slash pop number. Should have been another hit for them. Catchy chorus. I mean, I love the vocals on this. If you love kind of like those big soaring vocals from, like I said, ELO, The Beatles, Queen, 10CC, that sort of thing. Aviary comes to mind. If you were another pop band, Aviary, you know, that's what you got to love about these pop bands, you know, like these guys, Aviary, Trillion, uh, you know, you can kind of throw, you can, you can throw maybe some Journey stuff in there as well. Uh, those bands that kind of had those big, big, big hooks. Uh, it's Never Too Late, Explorer Suite, the title track, uh, Seal It With a Kiss. Drop Dead, Catchy as All Hell. Such a fun song. Great, great tune. Uh, hey, You're on the Run, No Place to Go, Searching, another really memorable song, Hope and You'll Be Born Again. Again, killer, killer Jimmy Waldo stuff going on in this album. You know, Jimmy Waldo and then Mr. Shea, just a really good part of this band. And it's, you know, no surprise they left here to go uh, work with Graham Bond and Alcatraz because uh, two really, really good players. And, uh, you know, great vocals. Just a really, really strong album. There's the guys again here. So this is Explorer Suite. I just think for me, Edge is at the debut. It's just a little bit stronger top to bottom. But, you know, your opinion may vary. I know a lot of people really love the debut. Debut's got a lot of Mellotron. There's a lot of keyboards on, especially the first two albums. But good guitar riffs. I mean, uh, you know, some really talented players in this band. And I, I will give uh, John, John Fannin, a lot of credit for just being a terrific singer. And a really good guitar player who's, you know, riffs and solos fit the songs. This is not, you know, this is not your prog that's got, uh, you know, lengthy solos and jamming and all that kind of stuff. It's very compact songs, to the point, great melodies, great instrumentation, but it all is just kind of like nice and neat and lush and uh, makes a lot of sense. So there you have it. So that's the New England catalog right there. Like I said, can't go wrong with any of them. You can get all three of them, do it, because they're all three really good. I, I like the first two a bit better than the third, but third has its merits as well. It's actually a very solid album, but those first two, really good. So there you have it. Rank them as you like them in the comments below. If you've never listened to New England before, go here on YouTube, check them out, listen to these albums, come back and report what you think. Uh, like I said, if you like a lot of the bands that we kind of mentioned before, I think you might uh, actually dig these guys. So uh, for the vocals alone, tremendous just really good band but like i said great keyboards great guitars uh just a, a song based band that's got elements of pop and prog and hard rock just come kind of colliding together 
doing a great job. So uh, visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Coming up uh, tonight, which you'll see tomorrow morning, deep cut dive into the catalog of Kiss with Jack Toledano and Stephen Reed. I'm bringing them both on together. So the three of us will offer up five songs deep into the catalog of Kiss, the non-hits, the non-concert staples, the non-greatest hit selections. So uh, that'll be tomorrow morning on Deep Cut Dive. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, uh, have a good day, everybody, and we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.